Hi everyone, my name is Steph, this is Kidlit Joy and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to share some picture books for the spooky season. It is October and I am a big fan of spooky season, even though I'm in Australia and Halloween is not a huge thing over here. It's becoming bigger, it's more popular now than it was even when I was a child, but it's still not you know, as big as it is in North America. So I tend to take a different kind of tack when I'm choosing books for spooky season because Halloween for us, it's not the kind of traditional Halloween that you would see in American or Canadian kind of TV shows and movies. For us, it's a little bit different. So I've picked books that have monsters and different themes that could be translated to Halloween. And then some of them are more traditionally Halloween, but with an Australian twist. And I do also have a couple of actual traditional Halloween books in here. So it's a bit of a combination and the list itself lends itself to being adapted based on the needs of the kids or the students that you're working with and finding something that will be of interest to them. So the first book on this list is The Monster Game by Philip Bunting, which is not a Halloween book, but it is a book about monsters. And it starts off with the premise on the back by saying, do you see monsters in your mind at bedtime? And this is for any child who is scared of the you know, scared of the dark or scared of the monsters under the bed or in the cupboard. And it features tried and tested, as dictated on the back of the book, techniques for getting rid of the monsters. So it starts off by saying, picture the monster in your mind. So think about that terrible mo little monster in your mind, make a picture of it, and then consider it as something else. So it is really about helping to ease little one's anxieties about the idea of monsters. Not at all Halloween themed, but a good one to talk about during the season because those themes are coming up everywhere. And if a child is feeling a little bit anxious, it's a great one to read to them and to talk about the strategy of taking something that you're scared of and then making it into something funny or hilarious that takes your mind off of it. So great little book. The next book I don't actually have here. I can't find my copy of it. I think it might be in the classroom and that is Wombat Stew by Marsha K. Vaughan. This is a very, very famous Australian picture book. And it is in no way Halloween themed at all. It is about a dingo who captures a wombat and he's planning on making wombat stew. All of the other bush animals are trying to prevent dingo from cooking the wombat. And so they keep telling dingo to add different ingredients into the stew before the wombat goes in. The reason I like using this one at Halloween time over here in Australia is because you can adapt it. The cooking pot that the dingo is using can be translated like a witch's brew because all of the animals are telling him to add all sorts of various gross and yucky things into it. And you can do really cool things with creating your own wombat stew. And also it's just a really fun read. It has a very lyrical writing style. There is a song that is sung throughout the whole book. It's really fun to read out loud and it's just a great Australian picture book, but one that's easily adapted for the season. All right, then one that I have that is more of a traditional Halloween book. It's one that I think I was sent by a friend from North America and that is Halloween by Harry Bean. And this one is The Adventures of Halloween Night. The thing I like about this one is it's so beautifully illustrated. One, I love these end papers, but the artwork in here is delightful and it's about a group of children who are going trick or treating. And it's a bit like a poem as they travel towards finding their treats. I just adore this one. This is not something I would be able to necessarily find here in Australia really easily. So I was really grateful to be sent it. Just a really fun one if you want more of a traditional Halloween picture book. All right, then moving into some Australian Halloween books, there is Emu's Halloween. This one is by Anne Mangan and it's illustrated by David Cornish. And this one is about a Halloween party, but Australian animal style. So Emu is trying to throw the best Halloween party. And so she's enlisting the help of all of her animal friends. I also really like the illustrations in this one. To me, it looks like watercolor, which I always love those kind of illustrations. And it's just really fun and enjoyable. And it's taking that Halloween theme, but giving it an Australian twist. Probably the book that I've had the longest and I just stumbled across this and bought it years and years ago is Halloween in Christmas Hills, The Legend of Stingy Jack by Karen Taylor and illustrated by Heath McKenzie. This one is about trick-or-treating in Australia. And it does acknowledge the fact that trick-or-treating is not really a big thing here. We have the Cameron family. They love all sorts of holidays. And at the start of the book, it goes through all the holidays that the family love. But Miles Cameron, the youngest loves Halloween and it's the first time he's been allowed to go trick-or-treating in his court with his siblings and he's got a hand-me-down costume which he's not thrilled about and then he's dared by his older siblings to go and knock on the door of Stingy Jack who is sort of the street recluse and has the big scary house and so Miles is brave enough to stay on the doorbell but then when his siblings run away he can't move and 
he informs Jack that it's Halloween and isn't quite sure what Jack is going to do and then he ends up getting what he considers to be the best treat of all which you will know that sometimes when you are playing in the neighborhood and you are constantly hitting or kicking balls over the fence sometimes you never get those back and then stingy Jack's Halloween treat is returning a giant bag of the neighborhood balls to Miles who is just thrilled with that. That's a very representative <laughs> Australian Halloween story I suppose. Then there is a book called The Monster's Monster by Patrick McDonald and this is a book that I can't even remember where I picked it up. It's not necessarily a Halloween story. It's about three little monsters who are big and bad but they end up coming across and, and meeting an even bigger and badder monster except they discover that this monster is very polite and very kind and along the way they learn something about being grateful and grat being grateful for what you have and it's a really adorable story with really lovely illustrations and a great take on the Frankenstein monsters story. Another Australian author is Nick Bland and he has Monster Chef and this is about Marcel who is a medium-sized monster who wants to be scary but he really isn't scary but he does love to cook and the things that he creates in the kitchen are terrifying <laughs> and he finds that that is his skill for scaring others is by creating these terrifying creations in the kitchen. It's fun, it's got great bold illustrations. It's also great for talking about the fact that just because you think you should be good at one thing and maybe you're not doesn't mean you don't have a special skill set that can't be utilized. So a great story. And then also by an Australian author illustrator there is What Do Werewolves Do When It's Not Halloween by Heath McKenzie. This one is very much themed around Halloween and we go through all sorts of spooky Halloween creatures and what they do when it's not Halloween. And this one's quite fun because it does point out that werewolves, when it's not a full moon and not Halloween, are probably just like you and I and that they're hiding in plain sight. So pick your audience for this one because this could be a little bit scary for younger readers, but it was really fun. It also features a lot of rhyme in here. It's got a great lyrical storytelling style, so it's a great read aloud. And then finally, this one is a super simple one and one that I realize I probably should give to my niece because she's big into board books and we've got a couple of Halloween books for her is Spot's Halloween by Eric Hill. I will never not love a Spot book. I grew up with Spot so for me that's just huge nostalgia and to see that they're still coming up with Spot books to this day just makes my heart happy. But this is about Spot and his friends choosing Halloween costumes for the season. It's very simple. It's designed for very very young readers. Simple text, lots of bright colours and a very predictable kind of story but nevertheless it is a fun fun Halloween read for very small children. And those are my Halloween recommendations. In the comments I would love to know what would you recommend as a picture book read for the spooky season. It doesn't have to be traditionally Halloween themed. It, as I said I'm I love adapting books to the season. I think that can be really powerful as well. But if you have a really great recommendation for a Halloween picture book that I should add to my collection feel free to let me know down below. Because as I said we don't get a huge number of the overseas Halloween books over here or they, they're not publicized as much so if you know of something feel free to let me know down below. If you want to let me know that you're here but you don't want to leave a comment feel free to leave a pumpkin emoji down below otherwise I hope that wherever you are in the world you're staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.